Welcome to the oral history program of the Heritage Centre, Mr. Venkatesh Manar. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. Right. You, you are a senior alumnus in the sense that you were in, the, uh, in IIT Madras in the 1960s. So, what years did you study? I was here from 1965 to 1970. I graduated in 1970. Uh, you got your B.Tech uh, yes. uh, degree from the institute. And, and that was the time when the B.Tech was a full five years. Uh, the, the, your, your branch was uh, chemical, chemical engineering, was it not? Right. So, let me just ask you some questions about how you came to join uh, um, the institute. I, I am aware that your brother was uh, also an alumnus and he's older than you. So, um, can you tell us about your family's right. interest in the institute? Right. Um, actually, it started with my mother and uh, um, she was the one who was the driving force to, she used to be, look out for opportunities for us in terms of what we should do in, our, in terms of our education. And uh, she was the one who actually um, found out information about the existence of the IITs uh, and uh, made sure that we prepared, because at that time it was not widely known and um, the standard uh, 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 pr uh, procedure would be to go to something like the Indian Engineering College or AC Tech. Uh, but she found out more information and uh, also fortunately I had a, a cousin who was in the first batch Mm. So, she had some prior information and knowledge about the IITs and of course, by the time my brother joined, I think the concept of the entrance exams mm. was just starting in 1962 and uh, so he joined and uh, by the time I was ready to apply and join, it was three years later. So, and the IIT was also getting established and well known and mm. uh, also more competitive. So, by the time I came in, mm. there were quite a few students writing the entrance exam and it was comp but at the same time, it, it was not as anywhere, anywhere where what it is today in terms of the preparation required. We were pretty casual about mm -hmm. preparing for the entrance test, mm -hmm. and writing it, and uh, um, uh, it did not in any way affect our other schedules. Uh, so, uh, and uh, we just uh, hope that we get in, that's all. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember several of my friends, uh, I was doing my pre university at Vivekananda College, and several of us wrote the exam. And I recall that uh, one day we said, okay, let's check whether the results are up. So all of us biked to the institute and uh, checked to see if our names were there. Mm. And uh, as it happened that there were about five or six of us, all of us got it. Ah, I see. Uh, so it was nice that uh, yeah. we were all, our names were there and we said, okay. Right. But, but it was pretty matter of fact. It was not a, a big deal those mm. days <laughs> to mm. make into that. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, uh, but uh, uh, the other interesting part was the fact that it was residential. So, yes. although as a native of Chennai, it was exciting to, um, you know, shift into the hostels and mm. stay in the hostel for the full five years. And um, I think that was a very important uh, condition, precondition uh, at that time for students to compulsorily stay in the hostel. Uh, because uh, we interacted with our classmates and um, seniors much more actively. And uh, we also, um, uh, had the chance to interact with those who came from other parts of the country, you know. Mm. It was, my mm. class was quite diverse. There were only about, uh, in a class of 200, there might have been about 50 or 60 local um, and the other were all from different parts of the country, a huge contingent from Delhi, Calcutta, Bombay. So, it was fair, truly uh, pan-India at that time. Mm. I don't know how it is today, but uh, it, is, it was. So, that was wonderful to be able to interact with people, uh, students from all over the country. Hmm. Where, where did the exam, um, where were the exams held, the, the entrance exams themselves? Also in the institute or no, somewhere else? No, the exams were held in uh, places in the city. Uh, I, I forget where it was. I think it was in, in my own uh, uh, Vivekananda College, probably we had a center and uh, they, uh, they held it there. Ah, so, you studied a year in college before uh, yes, the, joining Yes, at that here. time there was no 12th standard. We had to leave high school at uh, grade 11 and then do a year of what is called pre-university yes. in a college like the PUC. PUC. That's right. And um, then you could go on to do an undergraduate hmm. uh, or you can apply for a professional course. Right. So, with PUC it made it the same 12 years. Hmm. Hmm. So, so you, you uh, visited the institute to check your ranks yes. and had a taste of the campus uh, yes. apart from what your brother already yes. told you about. And because yes. my brother was here and I was used to come in sometime join in for the movies 
OAT movies. Ah, right. Yeah. So right. I, I was already very excited and I was very clear that I wanted to join. If I got in, I would definitely right. join. So you were already an IITian by spirit, that's I think. That's yes. And mm. uh, I got a good flavor from him. Mm. And uh, at that time, there were only uh, yeah, maybe when he joined, there must have been Krishna Kaveri and maybe Narmada Tapti. And then by the time I joined, uh, the Godavari and Ganga. Were what years did your brother study here? In, he in was history? here from 62 to 67. Three years my senior. I see. Uh, yet I see that uh, there are some campus times which seem to have been edited by him uh, and they are continuous with the issues that you edited. Is that right or is there some printer's devil there? What is the it could be, record? No, no, yes. It was quite distinct. We were in different years. I think he was the editor just before me. Uh, and then he left. He was in his final year. And then when I took over, I was in my third year and he had already left the institute. Right. But, and there was no overlap uh, years between you and your no. brother. Right. Uh, who was the f um, your cousin who from the first batch? What's his, his name? His name Vepa Prasad and he still he lives in uh, San Francisco uh, in the Bay Area. And uh, yeah, he was in the first batch so he told us a lot of stories too. And uh, But he, in his recollection, now a lot of his early classes, first year, second year were all in easy tech outside because none of the buildings here were ready. Um, and uh, so they had a quite a tough time actually because it was their classes were kind of all over the place mm. and uh, mm. they didn't have any formal, uh, you know, I didn't have the workshops and labs ready. Uh, so I don't know what kind of... And for a while they lived off campus too? They lived off campus. Yes. Uh, and uh, so it was a bit of a makeshift arrangement. Mm. Uh, but by the time I think uh, he says that he... He, he stayed for a couple of years in the uh, uh, Kaveri or Krishna hostels. But he had left by the time I joined because he was 59 batch and he left in 64 mm. or a little earlier. Right. So, uh, which hostel did you uh, I joined, join? I joined, yes. it was the Ganga hostel. It was, mm. first, it was a new hostel, brand new. Yes. And Jamna was also just getting ready. So, we, my batch was divided between Ganga and Lake You Lake. got a brand new hostel yes, to new live hostel. in. Yes. Absolutely. Right. And. Um, uh, so that was the first year and all of us were uh, fresh, uh, freshmen in that year in that hostel but subsequent years we got split and uh, uh, moved to other hostels and we met with people from other batches. Mm -hmm. So the second year I went to Narvada, third year I came back to Ganga, then Saraswati, so it was all. all I see, years. right. Now was the skating rink the, uh, located where it is uh, skating, between Saraswati exactly. and Godavari? Exactly. Uh, yes. It's Sangam, right? Yes. So, yes. yes. It's still, uh, it's, uh, is it still there? Uh, Very much. Yeah. I was walking by just the other day okay. uh, and uh, the, its surface has been improved. Okay. <laughs> yes. And uh, they were just beginning to have some uh, competitions but I know it was much more organized in terms yes. of roller skating competitions. Yes. So there was a uh, um, a lot of inter-hostel uh, sports activity, if I, uh, I understand, from the annual number that used to be brought out. Yes. There was a house system. Uh, was this in uh, place at that time when you were a student? Uh, definitely we had inter-hostel uh, sports uh, activities uh, in some games. Um, I don't recall whether it was in, uh, comprehensive, it covered all the games, but uh, uh, definitely it was there in tennis and uh, I don't know about soccer, but a few uh, badminton, uh, table tennis. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And bridge was something that was catching on then, so there used to be inter hostel bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe mm -hmm. chess. Uh, so, yeah, it was quite a range of games. Um, uh, the big thing was, of course, the inter IT meet. So, mm -hmm. uh, to select them, I think, out of these uh, inter hostel competitions, I think they came up with uh, mm -hmm. those likely to represent the institute. And they were big events, right? In, uh, held in one IIT. And I, I don't know if they continue to be held now. One IIT by rotation. They, they are, and there are many more IITs now, of course. So uh, we have the last one was held uh, in IIT Madras. Oh, okay. Um, so that is an institution that's uh, been there for some time. Yes. And as Campus Times editor, I uh, I joined the team when uh, the meet was in Delhi one year to report for Campus Times. Yes. 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 Uh, what was the 
uh, campus like around the hostels uh, we understand this was village land which was where the hostels were built That's right. so it was really agriculture land which had been plowed flat without vegetation and so on Correct. so is that your memory of it or yes. was there uh, the, where the, the area where the hostels were built were quite uh, sparse there was no uh, uh, vegetation there it was kind of barren land and uh, I know that subsequently uh, the uh, trees were just being planted so they were quite uh, young and uh, now of course they've all grown in, uh, into very large it's almost 50 years 50 so years yes and, uh, and uh, but at that time yeah it was quite barren if you stood on the that main road from Ganga you could see down the line right up to Kabe, uh, Kabe. Mm. And, uh, without any obstruction. Well, I've been told that looking the other direction, maybe from the rooftop, maybe from the terrace, you could actually see the sea, uh, yes. which I don't think you yes. can do now, oh, or yeah. even in my student days in the 80s. Yes. Yes. So, yes. was that true? Yes. I mean, can yes. you confirm that? We, yes. Because yes, mm. there were no tall buildings in those days to obstruct the view. And um, uh, so, yes, uh, it was a, a very quiet, quiet time. I mean, the city was much smaller. And in fact, south of Taramani, there was almost no activity. It was all uh, mm. uh, just uh, paddy fields and no act. Now, what is today the uh, old Mahabharata road and the East Coast road, there's very little activity there. Yes, right. Uh, so, th once you joined uh, the institute, you had uh, a new system of uh, education with uh, different kind of grading. Right. So, uh, well, let's just talk about the workshop because that was an institution right. again which came up early. So, what, what was your right. experience? That was quite an experience and uh, obviously that was the uh, imprint of the German collaboration. The fact that engineers must be uh, trained to, uh, in the basic, uh, uh, you know, uh, carpentry and uh, uh, forging and uh, uh, basic mechanical uh, operations and must be uh, must have the skills to do it on their own. So, in the first year, uh, every other week, so 50% of our time was in the workshops. Mm. So, we spent whole days uh, by rotations uh, starting for a few weeks uh, with carpentry and then with fitting, then with machine shop. Uh, so, it was all, um, it was, yeah, it was, so it was the whole of the first year was actually only carpentry and fitting and in the second year, we got into machine shop, uh, smithy, uh, then uh, welding, mm. um, electrical. Mm. Um, uh, so that continued in the second year. Although I'm not sure whether the second year we had 50 percent or slightly less, maybe a, a little less than 50 percent. Mm -hmm. But so it, uh, workshop was quite intensive in the first two years. And at that time, as you know, the first two years were common for all branches. Mm. And we mm. split up only in the third year. This. Uh was it a semester system or was it no, a year no, no. There was e a annual exam? The system was just starting when we were in the uh, final year. Hmm. So it just started. Uh, so till then it was an annual hmm. thing. And uh, it was terrible because you had to uh, pass in all the subjects. And uh, one of my classmates actually, he failed in English the first year and uh, he got, uh, he had to repeat the first year. Right. Uh, and uh, so there was no way in which I could. <laughs> it was a little inflexible at that time. Mm -hmm. But of course, subsequently, things. Were so, did that mean he had to repeat the entire, repeat the all the courses, course subject. all the course subjects yes. again? Mm. So that's, that's something that's obviously changed. Right. It's. Uh, I find it curious, but I think there was no civil engineering uh, workshop. Uh, after all, there is a certain amount of manual work uh, which uh, one could. Uh, get trained in there was no to make workshop, to make concrete workshop. structures and so forth yes uh, but i thought the, the bsb I, I guess it still exists right the building sciences yes it does yes had its own labs and uh, concrete and other labs and uh, so there was no need and i don't know maybe it was also the way the germans i think germans are very focused on mechanical mechanical engineering yeah yeah and uh, by the way some of the excellent workshops and i, I guess they still exist are the more specialty ones like turbo machinery, IC engines, steam, steam engines. Yes. No steam engines exist today. I, I think it is not functional anymore. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Uh, we had a whole uh, workshop for steam, uh, steam engines. But we have seen a model of that in existence now, okay. uh, the the model of the plant that you worked in. Yes. Uh, but I think the plant itself is uh, yes. non-functional or dismantled. Full-fledged steam engine. Which we used to run experiments and mm -hmm. uh, you know, measure various 
uh, outputs for and inputs. Uh, so it was a full-fledged steam engine. Running. You did this in your uh, was it in your third year or uh, uh, later? Steam steam at a, an uh, IC engines and all must have been third year. Uh, this was the when you had taken up your subject, uh, yes. uh, your yes. department yes. subjects. Yes. And less frequent, uh, not every week, mm. every other week, but definitely we had uh, half days set up for mm. steam or IC or in a week maybe we'd have uh, workshops once or twice a week. Yes. It would be different workshops. Mm -hmm. But yeah. all the whole quite intensive because um, I don't know the timings now, but we were uh, uh, at work every day for um, se seven, seven and a half hours. Uh, either it used to be a whole day workshop or, and, um, or lectures uh, or laboratories. Mm -hmm. um, and um, every Saturday used to be a surprise periodical. Mm -hmm. uh, for which the subject will be announced on Friday evening in the hostel. So there would be a periodical, but yes. you didn't know which subject it yes. would be in. That was the surprise element yes. there. The surprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that kept us on our toes actually, because you sometimes you couldn't guess. Sometimes you could right. guess when everything else was exhausted, you know mm -hmm. what's coming up. But uh, mm -hmm. in the beginning it was quite a surprise and there were a few surprises. Um, it, it is good. In spite of uh, this um, surprise element and so forth, you still had uh, so much time for extracurricular activities. Ah, that was of course optional and uh, some did, some didn't. And uh, I was in a group, uh, there are several of us who were interested in more of the literary and cultural activities, uh, less of sports, uh, although uh, there were others in sports. Um, so we enjoyed uh, quiz. Um, quiz was a big thing, a lot of quiz competitions. Uh, what, and then there was a thing called group discussion where uh, mm. you get together a group of five and then the, the, the team, the teams compete and a topic is given to them just at the start of the thing and then they have to start uh, talking about it, you know, without prior preparation. Yes. And the topic would not, would just be announced at that time. So uh, we, have, we used to have those competitions and then of course debates, uh, you know, to again topic announced and you have to mm. talk without preparation. Um, and so that used to go on um, and uh, then we used to organize every year the cultural week um, so that, that was again uh, very interesting because for the first time we used to get invite other colleges in the city and some from other parts of the country as well to join in the competitions. Mm -hmm. um, there were all these literary competitions plus uh, co uh, competitions in entertainment in singing and instrumental and all that OAT so it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the format of the present cultural week, but uh, that's how it was then. Um, th what was the driving force for this great enthusiasm for sports activities, as well as the cultural activities? Uh, do you think it was uh, just the was culture of those days? Yeah. Uh, we had just five years, so the curriculum, although it was pretty uh, tight, was not so packed as it is today. Probably it's now four years in its semester system, uh, a lot more material is packed into each course, um, uh, so the students probably have less time today mm -hmm. uh, to think about any kind of other extracurricular activities. And uh, that's something which I want to mention even when I talk, the fact that for me at least personally, um, I benefited uh, equally from the academic uh, training as well as the exposure to a whole range of extracurricular activities. And, mm. um, and that has stood me in good stead, uh, I think, in my career, in all my work. Uh, the fact that it honed a lot of my communication skills, oral, written communication, uh, all that become, becomes very useful to you, you know, in your, mm. when you're working in a, mm. uh, in a job or, in a, or even if you're giving, you're asked to speak somewhere or in a meeting, to be able to represent with uh, clarity, uh, you know, your point of view. Uh, it's a it's a very important uh, skill to have, and uh, it could uh, make or break you know uh, your uh, ability to advance in your career, mm. you know, uh, depending mm. on how skilled you are in that that kind of activity. And then the idea of um, so those are skills that we could still do with. We yes, could I we think, we should yeah, not lose them. I we should not lose them mm. because you know subject knowledge. Uh, of course, everybody acquires, and that's priority. But as you know. That alone is not enough today. One has to be able to uh, do much more than that and interact, have social skills mm -hmm. and also 
uh, have knowledge on a wide range of topics because you are not working in isolation. You know, if you are a civil engineer or a chemical engineer, you are de dealing with an environment which has so many other factors and uh, so the fact that you have to keep an open mind and uh, be widely read and informed about a whole range of topics um, becomes very important today. Mm -hmm. and it, it was always important but I think it is even more important today and especially with fast changing um, you must be aware of things that are going on mm. and uh, the uh, different uh, types of uh, uh, trends in various fields and uh, you know uh, unless you are aware of that uh, you know it might mm. uh, have a negative impact on your career. Well, well th those were the days when there was no question of computers leave alone the internet. Yes. So what were the sources of information because today is uh, yes. uh, we know what we are in. That's, that's a huge What did you, yes, yeah. what, what was but your I source? Th this 50 years represents I think a period of really maximum uh, uh, change you know in human uh, <laughs> existence. The fact that we moved as you said rightly and I am going to talk today. The fact that we had no computers, uh, no internet. Not even a television. In fact, the first black and white television came when we were in the fourth year or something. And um, no mobile phones, no social media. And so, our means of communication was highly limited. Mm. Like a few landlines and uh, phones, uh, but we had radio and uh, yes. we used to uh, listen to Voice of America mm -hmm. programs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we used to get magazines. Uh, mm. I, I was an avid reader even then of say Time magazine or Life magazine and get information from them, international news from them and of course read newspapers and uh, Indian magazines as well. Uh, but uh, we, uh, even then um, uh, I felt the, uh, I learned the importance of uh, that wide um, uh, range of interests being so important. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I took, I did it naturally and many others did li like me, like me. But I think the environment here fostered uh, that kind of thinking at that time and also I was exposed to a whole range of uh, literature which I didn't know before um, and then music, different forms of music from classical, uh, Hindustani, jazz and we used to get artists who came and performed here. Mm -hmm. The Germans used to send the jazz troops mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we, we for the first time we saw all that. All that influenced our own thinking and mm -hmm. broadened our mm -hmm. perspectives. Uh, I think that was a wonderful part right. of uh, living on campus and the fact that we were all resident here was a great plus. Yes. So maybe with that, uh, with that kind of development in mind uh, is the um, source of IITM being, uh, you know, residential campus. I, I'm just proposing that to you. Would you know whether it was Professor Sengupto or someone else who um, because thought of this idea? It yes. to be uh, uh, a non-negotiable issue, right? I mean, somebody got admission, he was expected, he or she at the, was expected to stay in the hostel. Although I must say at that time we had very few uh, girls joining and uh, only later on I think it has slowly grown. Um, the gender ratio was <laughs> heavily skewed um, and, um, uh, oh, but it, it was a precondition that we had to stay on campus and uh, uh, there was no serious objection and mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody liked it. This suggests that uh, all the IITs being residential, mm -hmm. um, the, the idea of residential institutions goes back even further than the establishment of IIT Madras alone. Yes, yes, I think so. Uh, and so I think they copied the same model and uh, for whatever reason, I don't know if there mm -hmm. are other reasons why they had this model of uh, the fact that we had to work long hours and have workshops and um, because we started at 7.30 in the morning and I, I don't mm -hmm. know the time mm -hmm. is, they are still at 7.30. It was 7.30 and we used to end only by… In my time it was 8, hours. yes. It was 8 in the morning that the first class began and ended with 5. Except that one year when we had such a serious drought that the, compress the, sem the semester was compressed okay. to 4 months or 3 months or whatever. Okay. And so we had extremely long days. Oh. Uh, those were grueling days, yes. Okay. Um, so, I, I guess that you were uh, an avid participant in the debates and the dis group discussions. Yes, uh, a, yes, definitely. Yes. We, we enjoyed participating and, um, uh, and we also enjoyed competing with teams from outside or in, uh, being sent out. I, I have gone on some of the institute teams on uh, quizzes and debates and group discussions in the city, uh, sometimes outside the city also. 
Um, so it was just beginning. Um, we, I must say we did remarkably well considering the very uh, poor state of communication right in those days. Uh, the fact that we did so much was itself, uh, I think, quite remarkable. Uh, were there any uh, competitions, inter-IIT competitions or uh, uh, competitions similar to the Cultural Week in other IITs? Yes, there was. Uh, I, I know that IIT Bombay had and uh, IIT Kharagpur used to have. Um, we used to send small teams, I think. Uh, I have myself not participated. Um, but they had similar types of Cultural Weeks. Were, were you a... Um, a follower of any particular sports? I mean, were you a sportsman yes, yourself? Yes, I know. I used yes. to play tennis, and no, not of the so grade, you know, for uh, representing the institute. But I was definitely playing games as uh, tennis. And in the evening, after class, if you walked around, the soccer field used to be very active. Tennis courts were active. Um, basketball was active. Um, so a lot of uh, games, the students used to participate in one of those games in the evening. Track and field, the same stadium, of course, in its previous form, was also uh, well used in the evenings mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. like those who want to sprint or want to do, you know, mm -hmm. track and field right. sports. So I, w I would say yeah, it, it was it was fairly active, and the, uh, by those standards in those days, it was uh, we were in luxury, right? All those facilities mm -hmm. being available, and uh, much fewer students to use them. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we were very privileged. Did you have facilities at the hostels themselves too for, for games and yes. uh, entertainment we had, we had and so a on? Yes, common room and uh, the common room because in those days, you know, media, you were dependent on print media. So we had a lot of magazines uh, in the common room and newspapers where you could go and spend time and uh, music in the common room. Gramophone records? Yes. Yes. LPs. Yes. Uh, uh, Spool tapes perhaps? Yes. Yes. And, um, uh, because in those days, even uh, for us individually to even have a, uh, a cassette player or a record player was not, was a luxury. And uh, so we used to go to the common room and uh, listen to uh, music and, um, and catch up on the news. Mm -hmm. Or there used to be a radio there and uh, also catch up on that. Or, or a t table tennis table there. Right, right. Things like that. Uh, very much. Uh, uh, dependent, the common room was very important, uh, you know, mm -hmm. meeting, meeting mm -hmm. in the, in the mm -hmm. evenings as well. Right. And of course, you had dining rooms uh, exclusive yes. to each host, uh, hostel at that time. Had its own yes, hall. which is different from what the situation now, I right. understand. Right. Yes. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, so we used to meet also for the meals in the morning, afternoon, and evening. Mm -hmm. We used to go back to the hostels for lunch also, so, uh, because there's nothing available here. And uh, there was only a small canteen where you could get, you know, coffee, tea, and a few snacks. But uh, for mm. all our meals, we used to go back to the hostel. I dare say the hostel um, structure with dining halls and common rooms uh, molded the the group of residents then into one unit, uh, uh, sort of a loyalty. Yes. Uh, yes. So. Uh, uh, yeah, the fact that we all belong, there was a sense of belonging mm. to a hostel. Yes. And after uh, my third year, uh, there was a decision not to move us. So fourth and fifth years, we stayed in the same hostel. And uh, I don't know afterwards what they did, with, whether they continued to mix every year or whether they allowed people, students to stay in individual hostels, I'm not sure. Well, it was during your time, I think, that uh, Mandakini Hostel was inaugurated. Yes. So, that served as the first year hostel for uh, quite some time, uh -huh. uh, till the uh, mid-80s. Okay. Uh, so, it was the year where the, you met your batch. Yes. And then moved. Yes. In the second year. Right. Uh, I don't know if that's practice till today, that all freshers, freshmen go to one hostel, I'm not sure. We, we need to mm -hmm. ask our students, yes. Can, can I ask you about the uh, director, the registrar, sure. and uh, the chairman, board of governors, the right. three um, people of whom we have a great number of photographs in our collection. Yes. So, have, did you get to meet uh, Dr. Yes. A.L. Mudaliar, yes. uh, Mr. Natarajan? Yes. Um, the, uh, all of them were, uh, you know, prominent personalities. The director, uh, Professor Sengupto, uh, he was. The I guess the founding director, so he had a, a, a strong sense of ownership and uh, he probably uh, um, uh, sort of managed a lot of things at, at his level. 
And the institute was a much smaller place. We did not even have this admin block when he was there. It came in when uh, his successor, I think Professor Ramchandran, took over. And um, uh, so he, uh, but he was one of those very formal types. I don't think he actually, I don't even know what his uh, specialty was, what branch he was, uh, or whether he was an engineer. Um, uh, so he was a full time director. And, um, uh, but it was a, a very formal arrangement and you know, mm. we used to see him, some, because of campus times, I managed to meet him a couple of times. Mm. But for an average student to <laughs> go and meet up with him or see him was rare. Yes. Uh, and he used to participate in all the functions, of course. Mm. Uh, uh, Dr. Mr. Natarajan, who was a registrar, was brought in, he was in the IAS uh, and he was deputed from the state government service, I think. But he spent a couple of years here, I think maybe five or even longer or maybe closer to ten. And he actively participated in our act extracurricular activities. He used to be present at a lot of our literary activities. Mm -hmm. He was a quiz master, very good quiz master. Mm -hmm. So he conducted a number of quizzes. Uh, and in fact, his quizzes were quite legendary. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, so that was uh, good fun. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, Sir A. L. Mugliar was the chairman of the board of uh, directors uh, uh, and board of governors, and we saw less of him. We saw him probably at convocations or very f or, or a visiting German chancellor or hmm. high, high official coming. He would come. Otherwise, we didn't see much of him. Hmm. Uh, how, how about your teachers? Because uh, we had you had two years in which uh, all your batchmates uh, yes. had the same teachers. And then subsequently, for the next three years, you had uh, your department teachers. Correct. Can you tell us about them? Right. Who taught you uh, and what? The first two did. years were common, as I said. And uh, for example, the first year was very basic, right? Physics, chemistry, English, uh, mathematics. Uh, so an extension of school, really. Engineering, in a sense. Engineering drawing. In a sense. Workshop. Yes. Workshop was 50%. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, the entering class, which was at that time about uh, 220 or so, was split into four batches of about 50, 55, 60. And uh, so we were in one of four batches and the batches went by rotation through the workshops and, mm. and other classes. And um, uh, uh, so we, we had, uh, a, a, on some days we used to have lectures all day. So we were having seven lectures in a day. Uh, mm. Some afternoons we mm. used to have uh, uh, draw engineering drawing, which would go on for the whole afternoon or some laboratory, chemistry laboratory or uh, physics laboratory, uh, so that would take uh, some afternoons. Otherwise, uh, uh, quite a few lectures, and um, the where, where were these classrooms? The, the classrooms for the first two years, mostly in HSB. Uh, not BSB. It would be HSB. HSB. Mm -hmm. At least my classes were all in HSB mm -hmm. uh, for the first two years, and then later on each of us went to us uh, uh, separate departments, and then we split up into all the other buildings as well. We, of course, we had BSB, we had ESB, we had MSB, which also housed chemical engineering and metallurgy, mm. uh, along with mechanical. But were the three lecture theatres in place in HSB CLT, at that time? Yes, yes. CLT, the CHLT. Theater, the chemistry lecture theatre and the physics lecture, yes, mm. they were all there. And uh, we used to use them. Uh, we used to also enjoy visiting uh, uh, lecturers coming in from different, I don't know, some different parts of the world and uh, also some different parts of India. And those lectures used to be advertised in, in the evenings uh, mm. sometimes. Mm, uh, so we used to, uh, these, these used to be in one of the lecture theatres. So they were quite popular too. Mm. Uh, we were talking about your uh, students, uh, your uh, fellow students. Yes. Yes. Uh, but that was, as I said, quite a mix. Uh, and I, we were lucky. And I, maybe in, uh, earlier batches and even later batches were not so heterogeneous. So we had representation from all parts of the country, as I said. Um, and uh, uh, we had quite a mix of students from both uh, uh, from small towns and uh, uh, big cities. Of course, big cities were predominant, uh, but we also had quite a few students who came from public schools, from all the top public schools: mm. Lawrence School, Lovedale, Mayo College, Ajmer, mm. Doon School, mm. Um, mm. Uh, Sindhya School, Gwalior. So all the top public schools, <coughs> there were. Uh, students in my class uh, and it was quite different because their whole upbringing, their outlook was different from us who came from, you know, literally um, middle, uh, middle class kind of 
schools in the city and uh, to interact with them it is quite interesting you know, mm. they mm. they came from a slightly elite kind of background uh, but we all kind of it, uh, you know in iit even so a lot you know mm. you come in and everybody is treated equally uh, some of them used to wear dressing gowns <laughs> Dinner, <laughs> I see. Because of the earlier thing, I think requirements, mm-hmm. and for us it was all strange, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, but it evened out, and over a period of time, you know, all those. There, there have been articles in Campus Times complaining about the dress code, about the other extreme, yes. where people used to come in very informally. Informally, yes. Informal. yes. Mm. Uh, there were no dress codes actually, right? I don't think they prescribed anything at all. If anything, it was unwritten. Mm, yes, yes, it was unwritten. Correct. But people used to wear on dhotis and mm. come for dinner, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, maybe they still do. But or maybe they wear shorts now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, that is. Well, maybe we could talk about uh, specific uh, friends of yours when we come to campus times, which we'll do shortly. Um, but the teachers, yes, yes. Uh, who were the teachers who you recollect? Um, uh, maths, uh, physics, chemistry, and so on. And definitely, chemistry. I recall, I recall Professor Swami is right here because he was a, a strong, uh, uh, you know, a, a lecturer who came in with very clear, you know, knowledge of the subject, and it was always helpful to us, you know, to have somebody mm. who came in strongly and was very clear about what he was going to teach mm. us. And so that was good. Um, uh, physics also. There was Professor Swaminathan and um, uh, a few other good. Uh, Uh, good teachers in physics, uh, and uh, uh, Ram Shastri was there in physics, um, and then uh, mathematics also. We had some uh, good teachers. Um, say, uh, uh, but uh, it was also clear that lot of onus was on us. Uh, of course, they uh, after the lectures, we had to go back and absorb it, and uh, we had to face the periodicals. And some of the periodicals were quite innovative, right? They were in the form of Quizzes mm. and uh, multiple choice sometimes, um, and sometimes uh, quite uh, tough. Mm. And um, by second or third year, uh, we started getting some uh, professors, especially the Germans and some Indian uh, professors as well, who used to use the open book exam. It, it definitely for engineering, drawing, and machine design, and all it was all open book, so you could take whatever you want to the hall. Mm-hmm. And uh, thermodynamics, some subjects we could carry whatever we like. And uh, then they would give us a question, which you know we had to figure out. Then yes, answer. yes. And that was tough. Yes. Um, and yes. then we used to also take home. Sometimes we used to take home and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. next day. So mm. uh, that uh, uh, so those innovative styles were the first time um, uh, 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 you know in incentives for us to start thinking independently mm. Um, mm. because still high school uh, it is very much by rote. You know, you just. Uh, memorize and then some question is asked and then you just repeat what you memorized without thinking about it. But here, some of the questions are framed in a way that you don't find an answer in the textbook, mm. and you'll have to really think and uh, figure out and uh, come up with the solution. Mm-hmm. Um, that was very important. I think that was really the turning point. It is for many of us uh, mm. at that time, mm. uh, and it got extended when I. It prepared me very well when I went to the U.S. for graduate study. Because it, it it was remarkably seamless. I always think I finished my undergraduate here, got into a plane and went to a good university, Northwestern, for my postgraduate in chemical engineering. Mm. And from day one in the class there, in fact, day one, the professor there asked, "Okay, who has already completed this in uh, chemical reaction engineering in kind?" Inevitably, I used to be the person who had already done in undergrad. Many of my other classmates from other American universities had not done it. Mm. So our curriculum. Mm-hmm. Was remarkably set, uh, and it was very up to date. Mm. Textbooks we used were all, you know, um, uh, 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 textbooks up to date, mm. and uh, so we were uh, uh, pretty well equipped. Well, well, when I was training for my entrance exam in the 1980s, yeah, yeah. I was told that the maths uh, curriculum, in particular, um, uh, involved uh, one course each semester or yes. each uh, year. So that made you on par with MSc graduates. Is that uh, true? Did yes, you have yes, such yes, a yes, yes, correct. Hmm. Because we had math right through until uh, fourth year, and uh, so it was pretty a pretty advanced math. We also, of course, I was in chemical engineering, so I had a lot of chemistry courses. Right, first two years, of course, uh, uh, there's chemistry uh, uh, common, 
but third year, fourth year physical electrochemistry and uh, many other organic chemistry, much more advanced. Uh, yeah, very very good curriculum. Uh, mm. I would say that was one of the features of our uh, training here. Mm. The excellent uh, curriculum for those times and uh, um, that combined with the practical nature of the workshops, hands-on uh, work in the laboratories, um, all that I think helped shape us into fairly, uh, you know, mm. uh, well qualified engineers by the time we finished right. and uh, prepared us very well for definitely for graduate study in the in the US. In the US. University in the US. We, it was seamless for mm. people like us. Mm. We had no difficulty and uh, so it was very easy and you must have heard that from a number of people, uh, alumni who have gone you know, to the states and to Europe um, that uh, we had no problem. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the department, uh, uh, who were the professors who were teaching you? In the department, Professor Venkatesh Shulu was our head of department, although he never taught us a course. Mm -hmm. uh, professor Gopichand was another professor who taught us one or two courses. And then we had uh, Professor Ramanujam who did materials handling. Then we had, uh, uh, who else? Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, uh, uh, Hari Prasad Rao, um, uh, Siva Prasad Rao, who is to teach mm. chemical reactions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, we had uh, uh, yeah, quite, a, quite an array of different disciplines uh, and, and I would say even my specialization in chemical engineering and my fifth year project in, uh, I, I did a project in I think process control, all that uh, was uh, very interesting and useful. Um, so, I would say a very good curriculum at that time. In, mm. in my field and my uh, classmates in other branches mm. also uh, testified to that, you know, that it was very good. Uh, did you choose chemical engineering as a result of your, uh, um, I understand you had a family business interest yes, yes. in… Yes, and I in, wanted to… Uh, yes, yes, manufacture of salt. Chemical engineering, but when I joined, because of my rank or something, I, by the time I came to the interview, uh, it was full and um, so they offered me metallurgy. Uh, what was this in the first year the when, when you entered it? When I entered. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I took metallurgy uh, with the objective of trying to make it at that time you could uh, make it opt for a change at the end of the second year depending on your grades. Mm -hmm. they, they used to permit very few changes mm -hmm. of branch, uh, only a few and so you had to perform very well in the first two years. And fortunately, I was able to make a shift to chemical engineering from at the end of the mm. semester. So, so you got your preferred yes. branch in that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right. And that's what I wanted because I was going to a field mm. uh, in which my you know my family business was in salt. And yes. Yeah, knowledge of <laughs> chemical engineering would mm. be most appropriate. Right, right. Um, the, um, what about the uh, literary and cultural week that we talked about? Yes. Uh, well, what what was its format and uh, the format what what was, yeah, went it on? Was the evenings of every every day and uh, one day was uh, inter uh, intercollegiate say quiz competition. Another day was debate. Another day was group discussion, and uh, then the fourth day was uh, maybe entertainment in innovative. In maybe fourth and fifth days were like that. So it was a week, and uh, each evening was one of these. Oh, so it was focused on the evenings. It was uh, through the day you had classes as usual. Yes. I see, so which is quite different from what is practiced oh. now. I understand okay. because the uh, institute doesn't uh, have classes. Is what I understand. Oh, in those days. That uh, yes, that. Okay, um, and uh, uh, the uh, competitions were all at uh, Central Lecture Theatre. Uh, it just used to be packed, um, and uh, the entertainment was at OAT. Hmm. So that's how it worked. But it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Right. Uh, and given those days, the, um, there were less other um, distractions. These were very well attended. In fact, mm. if you find hard, if you came late, you couldn't get space in the hall. And uh, it is to be full. So was the Cultural Week uh, instrumental in drawing you into campus times? Or was it your brother who had a stronger influence? Uh, I would say, you know, I take my own interest as well. <clears throat> and maybe my brother was also similarly inclined, uh, although I was much more than him, uh, uh, you know, engaged in all of this. And 
the fact that we were doing all, some things outside the curriculum uh, somehow was very appealing to me. You know? Although we had a very full curriculum, you know, and you can imagine quite demanding. Yes. Uh, to be able to take on anything beyond that was a bit of a thing. But uh, I somehow felt it was very important mm. uh, for some reason. Yes. And uh, uh, so I enjoyed it because uh, editing campus was not easy. You know? It was a lot of work. Yes. What effort did it actually involve? Can you it tell us about that? Because um, in those days, the um, the printers used to typeset manually. So they used to virtually they even have uh, mechanical typesetters. So it was all by hand. So each letter had been put in. And um, they were in the other end of town in Vipiri. And um, uh, so they were they were called the... It was called the Diocesan Press. Yes. And I don't know the connection. I assume it, they had some link with the, the German... Uh, thing. And, but they did a very good job, as you can see. The quality of print, even at that time, um, was quite good. We have and these, uh, yes, issues and here. Were, yes. And they were very professional. And I think uh, they gave us a special rate or something. So, mm -hmm. uh, it was very good. And uh, we uh, uh, had remarkable uh, uh, freedom to decide what we wanted to write about mm. and even write because there was very little editorial oversight or censorship. You, you did have a publisher. Uh, in your case, I think it was Professor Sampath. Professor Sampath. Yes. Whom we used to meet, uh, you know, once in a way to brief him. But he was not involved in every issue. Mm. Uh, yeah, occasionally, I used to be, meet him and brief him about what was mm. going on. Or Professor Sampath himself was a literary kind of man, I, yes, I understand. He yes. He was interest, interested in these activities. But he didn't get, if there was an issue where we wrote something that <laughs> caused a problem, then I would be called. But there were not many such instances mm. and uh, quite supportive actually, mm. I'd say. Mm. And uh, uh, so, uh, we could just have free hand in determining what we wrote. Mm. We tried to keep the front page for the news uh, uh, mm. and uh, the mid, mid section for the editorial and op-ed pieces. Yes. And then invite uh, articles and uh, that was a big task actually, to get people to write and um, uh, not easy. Uh, but we used to sort of uh, push and pressurize them to write and there were few good writers so we, we used mm. to try and get them to write uh, often um, and so we used to fill it up and then once we got the manuscript we had to typewrite it, we used to uh, uh, type it and then carry all the manuscripts to the press and then they would send it then we would go back when the proofs are ready and uh, check it there, sit there for half a day and check all the proofs there and mm. give back to them and then they would actually do the printing. So, there was a two-stage production. You would type it in yourself yes. and then um, have it typeset yes. at the diocesan press. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, this meant quite a few shuttles uh, yes. between yes. diocesan press yes, yes. in Kilpok. Fortunately, a few yes. of us had two wheelers at that time, which was quite a luxury. Mm. Very few could afford to have a mm. uh, motorbike or a scooter. What uh, bikes were popular then? Uh, I had a bullet. You had a bullet. Right. <laughs> right. Also, so, it was pretty mm -hmm. uh, privileged and then a few others had uh, other Java and other bikes. Um, some people had scooters, Lambretta, Vespa scooters, <coughs> but not very common. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in every hostel, maybe 10 or 15 students used to have bikes. And, and I dare say the traffic was less intimidating too. Oh gosh, very, mm -hmm. very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. And uh, most people were comfortable to use cycles actually. Mm -hmm. lot of, I don't know, even today probably a lot of students have cycles. Um, and they used to bike to class or walk. Lot, lots of students used to walk. Mm. Even I up to the workshops from the hostels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Walk back and forth twice a day. You know? Yes, yes. So was the proofreading done at the press itself? Yes, so that you didn't, you saved yourself another trip saved, back correct. and forth? Yes. So that used to take half a day. Three or four of us used to go mm. and sit there and mm -hmm. do proofreading there. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, what did this involve? This uh, reporting about, uh, let's say, the the inter the, sorry, the cultural week, or uh, talking about. Right. Uh, so there were a few of us. Yes. Uh, who used to. Professor Heitland says goodbye. Yes. 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 Um, uh, uh, some of those pieces were written by one of us, or uh, culture. For example, there could be multiple contributions from uh, different members of the committee, or even somebody from outside the committee. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we used to just, uh, and as editor, I used to put it together. That's all. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it was, it was, a, it was quite a team activity. I would say in my team there would have been about four or five active 
members who used to help me and um, uh, uh, there used to be one person who used to look after the production especially with the press and all that mm. lies mm. on the press and uh, the final printing and distribution of copies and uh, we how, how many copies did you make finally we were, see at that time the students didn't have a choice uh, every student would get a copy under their door in the hostel every month or uh, whenever it was published and uh, one rupee or two rupees was charged to the mess bill mm. so a few people grumbled about it yes but uh, so we had an assured circulation of mm. 2000 copies mm. so that's how uh, mm. we managed we used to print a fixed amount and uh, just push it out so you distributed them as well no we didn't distribute them we used to have it delivered the printer used to deliver it to each hostel and the hostel maybe uh, one of the assistants or somebody in the mess mm. used to slip it under yes the yes uh, what was the uh, mode by which the editor was selected in those days? I, ah. uh, much later, there was a publication, there was a more elaborate process by which interviews no, and in so every forth hostel, were held. Yes. There used to be elections to various committees. Like every hostel had one uh, uh, publications committee member, one literary committee, one entertainment, and one, uh, uh, I don't know, social or something else, and one sports. sports. Uh, mm -hmm. So, five elec uh, elected representatives from each hostel and so the publications committee representatives from each hostel formed the publications committee. So, you had a committee of about eight or ten, ten people and then they would select the edit mm -hmm. editor and they would also select the, um, what do you call it, like uh, uh, the managing me member on the committee itself, you know. Mm -hmm. who, who, uh, uh, who are, uh, had a little more management responsibility. I, I forget the term, uh, whether he had a title, uh, the, uh, like a chair of the publications committee or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the editor was uh, usually one of the members of the publications committee. Right. I don't know if you could select an editor from outside the committee. Now, one of the things that you notice on going through these old uh, issues of Campus Times is their uh, in incredible readability uh -huh. and uh, it, it's, it looks light but it's uh, got meaning and so forth. So uh, my uh, big question has always been who thought up these or who wrote these things called classified divertisements <laughs> over a cup of IIT and so on. Uh, who are the authors? Because the obviously they carried so many bylines but I don't think I uh, it was, written up by it was in invented as my, yeah. yes. A uh, lot of it was written up by us in the committee hmm. and uh, we used to just brainstorm and write it on. Th this was a committee work? Yes. This classified so divertisments? Multiple, multiple contributions, mm. correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so there was no one author and um, you know the, we didn't have a real publications policy or something. So we were pretty uh, easy going about what kind of material went into the, mm. each issue. And of course we had set things like doing a, a caricature or a mm. personality mm. and um, a few other articles and the editorial of course I had to write. Um, but otherwise it was pretty open mm. and uh, we did not attempt to be too serious and which would get boring in the students. So we tried to keep it light mm -hmm. and um, of course after each issue I used to get feedback both positive and negative. Right? Yes. And, and uh, some people hated it and some people said it was great um, but that's always the case. So. Uh, who were your artists? Can you can, yes. can do you remember who Mr. Gopal was? Or ah yes, these uh, are I think your uh, yes uh, Gopal uh, issues, was yes. A, a senior, and uh, uh, I think his name was V Gopal. Yes. And um, before that, earlier years there was one Saha, which is but he had Sahasrama who had graduated yes. by, uh, by my time, and uh, so uh, and then there was to be one Sudarshan who used to he has also done a few of these caricatures, right? Uh, um, I think so, but the next one is uh, here. It says Nyan. I think uh, that's the name I see here in this IIT yeah. hospital cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Um. And the crossword too. Was this also a joint effort that you no, created? No, this these? was created by one of uh, my classmates, called Parmeshwaran, who actually uh, devised the crossword. It was mm. a one-person effort. Yeah. So I don't know how often he did it, but it is there. <laughs> And then occasionally we used to run competitions like we once yes, had a yes. electrics competition and once we had a limericks competition. Yes. And uh, so that was uh, fun as well. 
uh, sometimes you carried photographs as well. So yes. the press was ready to print those. Yes, we, of course we had to give them. It was all black and white at that time, and uh, so we had to. Yeah, we just gave them the black and white pictures, and they would uh, make plates and then mm. print it. So how long was the turnaround time for uh, each uh, issue? I would say about 15 days. I mean, uh, to get the whole thing, or get, once you collect all the articles, to take it to the press and then yeah, then they will call us back when it's ready with the proofs and then uh, go and do that and then finally get copies here. Yeah, I would say about two weeks. Hmm. Um, of course, we cannot close the, the topic of campus times at any time, but specifically I would like to talk about your um, interview that you had of Professor C. V. Raman. Yes, that was uh, quite a He came for the... Uh, he came for the convocation, uh, but at that time, I was not the editor. It was I was. Uh, it was before I was editor. He was here, and there was another editor called Gautam Mahajan, and he was the editor. And so he took me along, along with another um, committee member. And uh, actually, we had to sort of um, press the director to be able to interview Professor Ram because we felt you know here fantastic opportunity. And reluctantly, he agreed. He said, "You come to the guest house." And we'll see if he has a few minutes before the convocation, mm. you can talk to him. And that's when we went there and uh, he was there sitting on the uh, still existing uh, lovely veranda with the director. And uh, then uh, three of us trooped in and um, uh, then he introduced us and uh, the director said and, um, and then we, uh, the director didn't offer us, uh, uh, you know, chairs to sit, you know. So we were standing and then we started uh, talking with… Uh, you were interviewing him uh, while you were standing? Yes. Yes. And then suddenly, uh, C.V. Raman stopped and he turned to the director and said, uh, Excuse me, <laughs> Professor Sengupto, uh, can you clarify one thing? Uh, why are these boys standing? Is this part of their NCC training? <laughs> I remember that. And then <laughs> Professor Sengupto went up. You know, he apologized and then chairs were brought for us and uh, we continued. But uh, that was an interesting thing. Um, uh, yeah, it was, uh, and if uh, Raman, in his uh, speech that day also, uh, that was the time when America had just put a man on the moon and uh, he was highly critical of that. He mm. said, this is all wasteful use of science and mm. uh, technology and mm. you know, that was his view at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh, that was one thing I remember clearly from his speech um, and uh, he also told us that that we should focus more on solving the problems on hand, mm. which is mm. also a point, I guess, so mm. um, uh, that is one of these things. Um, uh, the, uh, the next year when uh, we interviewed uh, Vikram Sarabhai, who was at that time holding uh, jobs that I think are held by about five or six people today. He was the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, he was the uh, chairman of the Baba Atomic Research Center the director of the National Physical Laboratory in uh, Ahmedabad and he was also the director of ISRO, uh, hmm. Space Research Organization hmm. in Bangalore or Tumba, wherever it was. So all of these combined into one and um, of course the organization was small at that time but he was quite a visionary. A very project. eminent speaker indeed. Very yes. eminent speaker and yes. very dignified hmm. and uh, uh, you know a very uh, solid scientist and uh, visionary mm. and you know we've had people like that in India you know who set the tone for a lot of this kind of work and mm. today we see all those institutions are huge each of them is huge by themselves yes and, yes uh, they may be more bureaucratic today but the fact is that uh, there are people like this uh, you know who had the vision to set them up you know mm. yeah, quite early after independence yes do you recollect uh, any meetings with uh, Mr. Gerard Fisher? No, no. Uh, I'm not sure whether we interviewed. From the, Gerard, uh, from Fischer, the German, German uh, yeah. uh, embassy? Yes, he was the German ambassador. Uh, uh, in, in, in Chennai, yes. At the consul. German yes, con the consul, yes. Uh, the name is familiar, but I don't recall mm. any specific meeting. He used to bring mm. a number of these German, uh, you know, visiting, uh, you know, troops or uh, mm. lecturers. Uh, there was a lot of activity. Germans took this collaboration very seriously. I think. Yes, yes. And, uh, IIT Madras probably represents one of their best investments, right? Mm. In any part of the world, in an educational institution. So, uh, uh, they were 
very generous and keep they used to send various types of teams and musicians and artists and you know various uh, interesting things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very nice right so were there any germans in on campus the, themselves i mean do you recollect uh, was professor yes. klein, uh, professor klein here then yes and klein was the he was the humanities and uh, he uh, was supposed to teach, teach german but i think he had a very light load <laughs> didn't do much so he uh, you know did things like campus times and a few other things and he had a fairly easy life i must say um, but uh, i think he was very friendly with students and uh, uh, well well liked mm -hmm. um, but he was supposed to run the german department because in second year we all had german mm -hmm. and um, then later on he had a bigger department so there were others handling the actual lectures um, and he used to probably interact with the local Max Miller Bowman and do other things. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was the one. Then there was a very, uh, there were many other professors, good professors. Uh, the foremen in all the workshops were Germans, in the fitting workshop, in the, even carpentry, uh, in the machine shop, uh, welding, all had German foremen and uh, obviously very good in their job. Do you recollect their names? Uh, um, I'm trying to think. Um, One Mr. Ebert was in Ebert, charge of Ebert, the workshop. Yes, I, I Ebert yeah, was overall. in charge of the machine shop, yes. Mm -hmm. I remember him well. Uh, and then there was a, a welding shop uh, person, also quite strong. Um, um, and they set up the workshop very well, I must say. So obviously, with their, their experience. And uh, uh, so the, all the foremen, in addition there were professors in, in the laboratories, the IC engine laboratory was set up by a German, turbo machinery, very strong, mm -hmm. uh, Wolfgang Scheer. Uh, Professor Scheer, yes. Professor Scheer was very good in turbo machinery mm -hmm. and an excellent turbo machinery workshop, I don't know how it is today mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that time. And then um, uh, in chemical engineering we didn't have many Germans at that time when I was there, um, but other, other branches had a lot. Right. So at, at any point of time, there would have been 10 or 15 professors hmm. and uh, of course all these foremen and all that. Right. So, German faculty during those years at that time. Hmm. And uh, like that might have been the peak, right? And then they slowly tapered. Well, um, uh, Mr. Manna, the um, five years of uh, IIT life is difficult, impossible to compress into an hour or so. Yeah. So, may I ask you if there's anything else that you would like to uh, highlight our document in this uh, program before we uh, yeah. end. Uh, yeah, I guess um, uh, my own experience was unique and it was that period of time, that phase in, you know, in India's development and, uh, you know, it was just 50 years ago. So, a lot of those things are no longer, uh, you know, valid today and things have changed so much. Um, but I'd like to say that they really provided a very strong foundation for me and most of my classmates would agree um, and um, I know that the institute has evolved with uh, I think uh, a phenomenal changes in everything around us right in terms of technology in terms of everything has changed so much and the fact that uh, the institute is still keeping pace with all of this is, is, is fantastic and the fact that uh, you know IIT Madras continues to be ranked number one we have we have just the, received that news for the know, that's third year running yes, yes. So that speaks for itself that it is maintaining its standards. Uh, uh, but uh, what I uh, that is since uh, after I went, uh, after I left IIT and I've now uh, been in the West and in the US and Canada and uh, yeah, looked at how universities and engineering schools function there. Um, uh, everything is changing quite fast mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, of course each of these. Universities has uh, uh, their core curricula, but uh, a lot of the research is handled by individual professors who not only depend on the institute but also get external grants on their own. Mm. Um, mm. That is the driving force there and uh, for research and I don't know if that's happening enough here yet. And, and uh, because if the professor got a research grant then he would obviously hire graduate students and sometimes even undergraduate students to mm. work under him. Mm whom you pay. Um, so that was uh, uh, a way, in, that's a way in which uh, research is promoted in the West and I guess that concept is coming even here, right? Mm. Um, uh, so uh, an area where I would really 
um, uh, ask for even more uh, you know attention is that we, uh, we must aim to be absolutely world class i know that it is world class in a number of areas but uh, to be absolutely world class in every field um, and one uh, good indicator of that is how much of our research uh, passes the test of international peer review you know, mm. how much of it gets published mm. in international journals mm. is a good indicator and i hope somebody is keeping track of that to make sure that the caliber of work being done here is being approved internationally and being published mm. um, and uh, i'm very happy to see the extension of iit's work into the technology park mm. so that uh, iit takes some of this uh, uh, to uh, to scale uh, you know for the benefit of uh, the community and for the country um and uh, uh, the uh, university i'm working with in now the university of toronto in canada we have now formed what is called a center for global engineering mm. and this this center what it does is um, uh, we keep track of all the research happening across the university in different departments and uh, some of these researchers are highly isolated they are working in a field piece of fundamental research or something they have no idea of its application somewhere else mm. whereas we mm. what we do is we try to bridge this expertise with what the needs are in the developing world mm. Mm. and um, and try to see if some of these latest research and techniques can in fact be applied mm. uh, to mm. solve some of the problems you know even if it's something like uh, safe drinking water yes something very basic or even a, a low, low cost toilet something yes. like that yes can you apply some of the latest principles of science and technology yes uh, to uh, come up with workable uh, you know uh, technologies that can be applied on a mass scale in a country like india and uh, i guess that's where our, our focus should be and mm. i hope that uh, you know we can continue to move in that direction um, i know that because of communication um, there's a lot of interaction between now the institute and the faculty and the students and counterparts in other parts of the world um so the flow of information is is much obviously faster you have access to the latest journals and the latest uh, uh, you know state of the art in in a, every field um uh, but to take that and then adapt it and build on that here uh yeah, is where the challenge lies and i hope mm. Mm. it should raise to the challenge and grows to even greater levels uh, for the benefit of you know um the community and for for, for india's benefit Thank you for these thoughts, uh, Mr. Manar, and uh, for sharing your time with us. We now, we, uh, Mr. Professor Swami, has a few questions. Sure. You could. No, no. You would like. If the German professors, uh, Professor Hofmann and Professor Sachs, yes, they were at the time when you were a student. Yes. Did they teach you? No, unfortunately. But I heard that prof. Yeah, Bizan. Both both names are familiar. Bizan. The reason I'm asking is the the quarters in which they stay yeah. was. the typical german bungalows yes. there were separate uh, quarters which were constructed i see in the second or third main road i see third uh, link road i'm sorry yes you were not aware of no the another is moral rearmament force yes have you heard about it yes this was the set up by rajmohan gandhi during your time yes. they must have come here rajmohan gandhi yes. yes was the person who used to bring those groups here yes the the king once or twice but some of i didn't get engaged in that but was there any write up about this in no the no i time? think it was just before my time uh, maybe i missed it i see because mm, yeah. it was the programs were started in oit oh, okay. and i have not able to get anybody to support me on this oh, okay no i have yes. i have attended this two three program okay and uh, rajmohan gandhi was invited by the chemistry department some time in uh, i think 80 beginning yeah. and uh, uh, the students want to bring it and there was a big crowd when it comes to say there and i wonder why they came he was he was talking about press council and all it was yeah. the yeah. president of press uh, trust of india mm-hmm. something yes. like that. so but the students went down the more interest asked about moral learning force the whole thing had been shut down by that time i see this was started mm-hmm. by a german mm-hmm. uh, i think to bring out some sort of peace uh, idea yeah. of peace after the world war and there used to be a collection of people from various nationalities right. they used to come and dance and then uh, sing right. 
uh, various uh, times and then they go away. <laughs> at least three times it was held in a I see. No, this was before my time. It was before my time. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thanks.